Hey everyone! In today's video we're going to be making this resin and watch part steampunk-esque style kind of ring. We're going to make it with resin of course, um, some real watch parts as well as some charms that look like watch gears and a stainless steel ring base that I got online and I'll post the links for all of this. I want to talk about it a little bit before we start to get into the actual tutorial itself. The materials that we're going to be using for this project are going to be resin and I'm going to use a couple of different types and I'll talk about why I'm using two different types and all of that when we get to that point. But for now I'm going to break everything else down. You're going to need a mold. I'm using a heart mold. You of course can use any shape that you would like. I made this mold but where I got the piece to make the mold was it was this, it was about this big and it was a plastic mold and it had a bunch of different shapes in it and all of that. So I made a piece from it and then glazed it and just make the molds from it from now on. I've seen something very, very similar on Amazon and it's uh, the shiny kind of molds. So I think I might actually pick some up, but I'll leave the description or the link for that in the description box below. So you're going to need your mold. You're also going to need your watch parts. These are actual watch parts that I got from Amazon and these are, I got them on Hobby Lobby and they're charms and they look a lot like watch parts, like they could pass for them for sure. So you might be curious about why I have a ruler here. I want to give you a little bit of advice if you decide to go shopping for watch parts. Keep a ruler on hand because you don't know what you're going to get unless you look at the sizing of the stuff and then check the ruler. like. See, for this, we're going to need smaller gears. Something like this one would be too big. Well, maybe. I, I guess it depends on what you're going for. I don't know. Okay, it would be too big for me. Regardless, if I'm looking online to see the size of the watch parts that I'm getting, this one would be roughly 18 millimeters. The ones that I prefer to use are, like, this is a standard one that would go in there. It's like roughly 10 or 11. So there's a pretty good size difference. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but once you start actually working with stuff like this, millimeters start to matter. So if you're shopping online for gears, keep a ruler handy or charms or anything like that. You always want to see exactly what you're buying because more times than I can count, I've gone to buy something and was like, oh yeah, that should be the perfect size. And I got it and it was too big. And the seller labeled it correctly. It was my fault for not consulting a ruler. A lot of these watch parts also came from eBay. Um, and it's kind of rough when you order these because you don't ever really know what you're gonna get. Usually when I get an order from somebody and I actually like what I get, I'll order a few more because it can get kind of shady. Um, you're saying you're ordering like 10 grams of watch parts. There's been times I've gotten just chunks of pretty much trash. And I don't even have any of it in here because I usually read it out, but it's not really usable stuff. So just be mindful that things can get kind of shady when you're buying watch gears from eBay. Another thing that you're going to need is tweezers. And what we're going to use the tweezers for is taking the gears and arranging them into the mold. Before we even do that though, I'll be pouring a layer in here and letting it set. And it's so it'll make a flat surface. And the reason is because it has a concave surface to it. The, um, the mold is curved inside. And if I put the gears in right now, it would be fine. They would stay in place and all of that. But once I put the resin in there, they would, the resin would start to get under the gears and it would make it you know kind of slippery and whatever and things would start to kind of crowd towards the lowest point in the mold so pouring a layer will make it flat and then we'll go from there you're also going to need a ring base this is a stainless steel ring base i got them from etsy and i will leave the link for that in the description box below they were cheap but they came from china so it took a really long time you could probably get something that won't take as long i went with stainless steel because i'm trying to work with that exclusively anymore and it's because there's no nickel in it it's hypoallergenic it doesn't tarnish it's super strong that's just something to consider of course you use any metal you want you can use plastic you could do whatever you want but i'm using stainless steel for this ring base. Okay, so I've mixed up a batch of resin that I'm going to use. For these layers, I'm going to be using Super Sap CCR. And I'm using this for these layers is because they're going to be clear. They're not going to be colored in any way. And this product is very yellow resistant. 
So that's what we're going to be using. The layers after this, the back layer is going to be black and I'll be using a cheaper resin for that, but we'll get there. So I have my resin. Now what's going on with this? This little platform that I have it on, um, one would probably assume that it's for visibility in the video and while it does help with that, I use these a lot and it doesn't even have to be just this orange one. I have like these cardboard pieces that I use and the reason I use them is because sometimes the mold isn't completely even. So if I pour some resin in there, it'll pull towards more of one area and not to the other. So I'll use scraps of paper towel to kind of even it out, if that makes sense. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna take my resin and I'm gonna use a stick and I'm gonna drop it in. Okay, now I don't know if you can see in the video, but all of the resin is starting to pull to this one side, which I even actually put a little pen mark there to show what side it'll gather to. So it's not really filling in over here, it's just all full over here. So that's when I take something like a paper towel and kind of prop it up under there. And sometimes one's enough, sometimes it's not. Okay, so I'm actually gonna... So now, I'm gonna add more in here. So you see that it's starting to pull in over on this side more. It's becoming more even of a layer instead of all bunched up over there. So that's the purpose of these little platform things. I suggest you give it a shot if this is the type of issue you have. So under normal circumstances, I would pour that in and we would have to wait until it was hardened to move on to the next layer. But I went ahead and I already filled one of these up and the resin is hardened so we can move on to our next step. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start to arrange the gears into the mold. Usually what I'll do is I'll take two of the larger ones and fit them into these corners. So I'll go ahead and start with that. So I'm gonna take that copper one and put it right there. And this one's gonna go in this corner, but it goes up kind of high, like the walls of it go up kind of high. So I wanna put this one underneath. So I'm gonna set that there, set that there. And with the gear arrangement and with creating in general, it's just a follow your heart kind of thing. I'm just kind of giving you the basic idea of what I do. I do aim to have um, a lot of color variation, a lot of copper ones, a lot of gold ones, and a lot of silver, as well as a lot of different sizes. So I'm just gonna go through and fill this in as I usually would. I like to place the big ones and then any time there's a space, I'll put a smaller one there. So you see there's these ones, there's a good, that would be a good spot for a smaller gear. So that is what we will put. Mm, I'm gonna wait on that. I wanna put a smaller one, usually in corners and that type of stuff, I like to put a small gear. So that is what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that arrangement. So what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna take more resin and I'm gonna pour it in there and I'm gonna seal these into place. Before I add the resin, I think I actually wanna add another little gear right there. Some of the gears will be magnetic and will stick to that. So that's what's happening there. So when that happens, I will take my wooden toothpick. Oh my gosh. Ah! There we go, okay. All right, now I'm ready to put my resin in. So I'm gonna take my resin and this is, once again, this is the Super Sap CCR and I'm gonna carefully drop it in. And the idea isn't to fill up the entire bezel. You want there to be enough room for the black background layer that's gonna come last. So with this, I'm really just using enough to get everything set into place. 
And this layer is important because if you just did this and then added a black background layer, the color would just swallow the gears up. I mean, you would kind of see them, but they would mostly be like eaten up by that color. So this is kind of like a little barrier to make sure that your gears can be seen. Okay, so I have enough in there. It's gonna start to spread around and set all of these into place. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a lot. You want enough room left in there for the last layer. So now that that's in there, we're going to wait. Uh, this stuff is pretty slow curing, so I wanna say like eight hours it would be cured enough to add the last layer, but we'll just come back tomorrow. Well, tomorrow for me, like next scene for you. So we'll see you in a little while, bye. Hi again. So it's the next day and the resin in here is all hardened up, so I'm getting ready to pour the third layer, which will be the black layer. If you have any questions about the resin, the mixing process, any of that type of stuff, I have a tutorial called Resin Basics for Beginners. Go ahead and go and check that out and that'll get you up to speed. So what I'm gonna be using to color this resin is activated charcoal. And I actually use this stuff a lot for a few different things. Um, I mainly use it for a soap making pigment. If you watch my other videos, I reference soap making pigments a lot, just like powder, oxides, and micas. They work really well in resin. Any kind of powder generally does pretty well. So this I got from brambleberry.com. You can also get, like I got this from Amazon before I got the activated charcoal from Brambleberry. I will leave the link for the stuff in the description box below, but it's just, it's a black powder. And I'm gonna add it in. And you don't have to do this at all. One of the reasons I didn't include this in the stuff you'll need is because it's totally up to you the color of the background that you wanna make. You, and you can generally start with a pretty small amount with pigments and then work your way up. Okay, so it's still a little light for me, so I'm going to add just a little bit more of the activated charcoal. Okay, so I'm happy with that black, and now I'm gonna get ready to start to drop it into the mold. So earlier in the video, I was talking about how I was gonna use a cheaper brand of resin for the background and explain why. So I'm using Amazing Clearcast for this. I use it a lot, but for very specific things. I'll only use it when I'm pigmenting the resin a color. Like if it was gonna be a clear part, like how this gear work is, um, it would yellow a lot and you would see that yellowing. So anytime the resin is pigmented, it's covering up that yellowing. So that's why I'm using Amazing Clearcast Clearcast, it's because I have made it a darker color. And if you're curious about what I'm talking about, I get into it in further detail in another video I have, and it is an honest review of resins I've used. And go ahead and check that out if you want to get more info on all that. There is most likely specific resin that's black. Um, or specific resin pigment, rather, that's black. Um, I haven't really checked that out. You can absolutely look into it and see if you find anything. And I really haven't looked because this black powder pigment works for me just fine. I really have no complaints and I don't have a reason to look for a resin specific pigment. But if that's what you wanna do, knock yourself out. So that's all filled up. I am going to let this harden again, and then we're gonna come back tomorrow and we're gonna add the ring base. So I have it right here. Like I said earlier, it's a stainless steel ring base. And we're also gonna need super glue. I didn't include that in the things you'll need because I forgot. So yeah, super glue and this will be the next step and I will see you then. So it's been a couple of days and this black layer is now completely hardened up. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it out of the mold. There we go, that's what that looks like. 
So now what I'm going to do before securing it to my ring base is I'm going to file the edges down a little bit because they're kind of jagged and kind of rough and a lot of the times when you use a mold that will be the case. This is a nail file. I have a video called Resin Crafting Tools I Can't Live Without and I talk about this and I know you can use other things to file down resin. I just really like using files like this because you have a coarse side and you have a finer side and varying degrees of finer grit. So I'm going to go ahead and just file this down. So moving on, we're going to go ahead and attach our pieces. I have some super glue, I have my ring base, and I also have some more resin. And the reason I have more resin is because after we glue this part to this part, I'm going to take resin and I'm going to secure this on better because the life of a ring is pretty hard. If you just glued this, it would stay on for a little bit, but it would pop off eventually. So you need that reinforcement part. So that's what's up with that. So how I go about gluing this part to this part is I will put the ring base onto my finger, dab a little bit of glue on, and then place the piece like I like it. I wanna give you a warning, super glue will destroy your piece, even the fumes of it. If, it's, if it gets on a part you don't want it to get on, like if I got it here, that part would be ruined. You have to be super, super careful when using super glue with epoxy. Just giving you a heads up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my super glue and I'm going to put just a little tiny dab right there. It's not going to take a lot. You're not securing it on for all time. You're really just trying to place it. So I have my super glue on there and I'm going to set my ring base on there. So now I'm going to let that dry for just a little bit. It doesn't really take long. It is now pretty secure on there. Now that my base is secure on there, I'm going to come in with my resin and I'm going to use a toothpick. So I like to get right up on that seam. And then I even like to come up onto the metal base itself. Okay, I think that should be plenty. So now what we have is, I don't know if the light catches it right, but you can see that we now have resin going up on the metal part, it's on the resin part, and when it hardens, it's gonna create a very, very firm connection. So we're gonna leave that, and then here in a few hours, we can come back and check out our finished piece. All right, so it's been a few hours. The resin is hard to the touch. This particular brand cares pretty fast. So let's go ahead and check it out now that it's all finished. So there's the front. And there you have it. And I suppose that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing and all of those things that come with YouTube. And if you have any questions or comments or just want to reach out and say hello, please feel free to hit me up on Instagram or on Gmail. I will leave the links for that type of stuff in the description box below. I thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.